Greetings, sirs and madams. I'm Starfix Zero, and today we're not playing any video games. Um, we're actually going to do a bit of an art video, and it is going to be a little rambly and unorganized, but I'll try to do my best here. So we're going to kind of do it in the style of a live stream, but it's not actually live, so I can kind of focus on what I'm doing and talking about here. So I have a friend online who goes by Call Sign Chief, and he is a remarkably talented young man who, uh, you know, likes to, like, draw giant robots and shit just like me. So, yeah, I like him quite a bit, and I, I really do like his work. But I wanted to see if I could um, help him out with some pointers on how to improve. So this is actually one of his sketches you see on screen right now. Um, it looks to be a a gym sniper too. So, yeah, what we're going to talk about today is how to add some more depth to the geometry and the line art for your mechs. So, I am by no means a professional or even, like, I wouldn't even say that I'm good <laughs> at drawing or anything like that, but I uh, I can give pointers uh, where, like, uh, where I can, so. Alright, so so first of all this line art like uh, it is very good to begin with it looks to be fairly accurate to the actual model or the actual line art the official line art of the gym sniper 2 and uh, the thing about chief's drawings is they're remarkably even like left to right like you won't really see anything lopsided like between the left and the right side so yeah he he's fairly good to begin with um Okay, so what we're going to talk about in the geometry is we're going to talk about how to soften some of these edges um, just to make sure that the form looks like it has more depth and then uh, so that the form looks like that's a little more together, you know what I mean? Because a lot of these lines are very solid and because of that, they're very good at cutting the form apart to kind of make it look like it's not connected together. Um, and then like, uh, the thing about lines is they can really tell you a lot of information about the shape of the form. And what I'm going to use as an example here is, uh, I think is, I think this is some concept art for Armored Core 5 and I apologize for the poor resolution, but, um, I think this does a pretty good job of demonstrating what I'm talking about. So yeah, this is, a you know, arm, it's Armored Core, it's a little busy. But uh, this image is, it's uh, there's no shading on it. Just just keep that in mind. But if you just look at the line work, you can pretty much perfectly tell what the shape of this armor is like. And one of the best things I want to point out is this armor doesn't look like it's like paper thin. Like it looks like it has some depth. Like it's really hefty. It's got some weight to it. So that's what we're going to try to do like um, with um, the line art here. So... I want you to kind of look at this uh, this shape right here on the shins, and then uh, these sides of the calves. So you'll see some very light lines, like right here, and there's one right here. That, like, if they weren't here, I guess we can actually demonstrate this right now. Yeah, if these lines weren't here. I guess it didn't really do a good job of snagging the right color for me. Yeah, so if those lines weren't there, it would look like these shapes are just round instead of being kind of flat on one face. So they do give a lot more depth to the geometry here. Yeah, so now that those lines are gone, <laughs> it looks more rounded instead of squared. And notice that the lines are very light and they're not even completely connected. Like they don't have to be solid to give you that impression of the shape. So that's the that's generally the approach we're gonna take to some line art. So obviously we have some very solid out, outline lines and then on the inside, the lines that describe the geometry or the form, they're gonna be a little lighter. And the reason they're lighter is like, you know, this whole piece with the outline, that's one piece. So we want it, we want it to look more connected. 
And there are a few different techniques we can kind of use to show that transition. So we're going to take a step back and talk about uh, some, some concepts here. I believe they're technically engineering concepts, but I'm not a very good engineer. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is uh, edges on forms. And, okay, where's the best diagram to look at that? Okay, so what we're going to talk about is, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, Jesus Christ, Wiki. Yeah, we're going to talk about um, bevels and chamfers on edges. So, yeah, this this diagram is a bit of a pain in the dick. But, okay, so imagine like uh, there really should be a third thing here to demonstrate, but like uh, imagine there's one more shape here that's perfectly rectangular. So a bevel, it um, well we're gonna you're gonna need to know a shitload about angles and parallel lines <laughs> like uh, in this video. So you know hopefully you got that coming in here. Anyway, so. A bevel is where it terminates in an edge that's not completely perpendicular to uh, these two faces. And perpendicular just means 90 degrees, like, a, like a from the other faces. So this one is at 45. Well, this one's 45. This one's whatever the hell 180 minus 45 is. <laughs> and uh, this one is a completely different thing uh, called a chamfer. And uh, the two phrases, they're kind of mixed up together a lot. Uh, they're kind of used interchangeably, but they are distinct. So a chamfer, it just, um, it kind of occurs at corners. And so bevels, they do a transition between the top face and the bottom face. And chamfers transition between uh, the top face and, the si and this side face right here. So they're basically softening uh, this transition into here and there are some better examples of chamfers uh, here's one on wood I think this is a lark's tongue transition back into the actual edge uh, here's one okay so these squares right here they are just uh, right angled corners and then if you kind of intersect them with 45 degrees right there that's a chamfered edge and it doesn't always have to be you know 45 degrees like on top of 90 degree corners you can do different angles but um the point is to kind of soften the transition uh he, okay here's one of the best examples so this is kind of like a, a two by four or something and it has one of its corners chamfered down there so uh, let's go ahead and uh, kind of do a very quick demo on that so we're going to go to a new thing. Okay. All right, let me pick up my stylus here. Okay, so let's just start off with a regular cube. Yeah, and I am really not warmed up right now but that's okay and you know these lines aren't straight that's not really the point of this lesson but okay so here you have a cube possibly made of tofu and you can see these lines here um, kind of give it very hard edges and so um, we're going to talk about some line techniques to kind of soften the transition between the faces Okay, let's go ahead and take this and move it to the side. And we're actually going to make a few copies of this guy. Okay, so what we're going to do is on this one, we're going to chamfer the edges by we're gonna basically just add some parallel lines on top of this, on top of these edges, and it should kind of make it look like we're adding another plane, like uh, between these two faces. Okay, so yeah, I guess if I were smart, I should probably 
I should probably rotate the canvas to make it easier for me to draw these lines. <laughs> but I'm not very smart, so uh, I really wish I had made that line a little straighter. Yeah, it would probably make this look a little less dumb. Anyway, so okay, now that we have those lines in, what we're gonna do is wait, is my eraser not on? Hold on a second. Eraser, what is wrong with you? No, it's that's right. Oh right. Yeah, these are all different layers. We gotta mush them all together. Hold on. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you improvise. Okay, anyway. Okay, so we're going to erase the original edges, lines that made the original edge. Okay, and let's go ahead and close up the shape corner. Okay, and I guess these corners should technically be a little more rounded. Whoa, Pen, what is the matter with you? Jesus. Okay. Sorry, my pen is like really misbehaving today. Okay, so comparing these two, you know, they're both still basically cubes, but um, yeah, this one is going to have a softer, it's going to look a little softer as a form, like compared to the cube, because uh, the transition between the two faces are less sharp. Okay, so as we're going to the right, what we're going to do is we're going to make the transitions even softer. So what I'm going to do here is, okay, are we on pen mode? Okay, is I'm going to actually erase these inner lines completely. do uh, lighter lines kind of like we saw on the armored core concept art and these lines notice they're the same parallel lines as this form over here but they're not connected you know and I guess they're lighter like as well so when you're drawing these forms you don't have to connect every lines like all the lines, like um, the human mind, it's very good at recognizing patterns. Like uh, a person who looks at this this form right here, they know it's a cube, even though the lines aren't connected, because um, like your mind will connect the lines; they're implied. But there is still some information, like that says these transitions are softer. Okay, so we can see the trend, like it's gonna go softer, softer. And here we're gonna pretty much do the, the softest we can go and without just introducing things like shading. Okay, and go ahead and remove these inner lines. And this one is actually so implied that it's almost kind of an exploit. And I, when we do our line art, I don't know if we'll go as soft as this. Okay, so here, we almost don't have the lines at all, but what we're doing is we're representing this other corner where these three faces meet. And your mind kind of fills in, okay, this is where the other corner should be. So, like of all the examples, this one's the softest. 
Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Oh, and uh, one more thing we can demonstrate is um, like your your bevels or chamfers, they don't have to all be the same depth. Um, you can you can do different things with them. Like you can actually make the chamfers deeper. Yeah, with my brush. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, this chamfer and we're gonna make it a lot deeper. Okay, I guess that will do that. Yeah, so the same basic concept, it's just another face or another plane that's transitioning between the two main faces of the cube, but it's a lot broader now. Same angle. Yeah, but now, yeah, the transition is more broad, so hopefully that makes sense. And there is uh, one more dumb trick. Okay, and so I was talking about parallel lines earlier. Hold on. Okay, forgot to flatten that. <laughs> okay. Okay, one last dumb trick is even though we were talking about parallel lines earlier, your your transitions, they don't actually have to be parallel. You can have them go at an angle my brush here. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, we're going to do the transition on this face again, or this corner edge. I'm sorry, it, it's been a while since I took geometry. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're going to transition that edge, but it is not going to be parallel to that edge. Okay, where's my eraser? Okay, so we added kind of like an extra face right here. It's kind of slicing through this edge right here, but it's not parallel. It's uh, it's deeper on one side than the other. So, yeah, you can do transitions like that as well. Okay, so now that we kind of basically have like uh, the fundamental techniques at our disposal, we can start applying it to the line art. So I am... Actually, maybe there should... There's like one more thing we should demonstrate. Um... What is the best way to do this? Okay, so it has to do with depth. And I, I guess I'm just gonna try to improvise this. I don't know if this is gonna work, <laughs> but... Okay, let's say we have... Um, we kind of have two plates of armor just sitting on top of each other. Okay, let's say we have that. And we also have this, or well, they're not sitting on top of each other, but they do meet together. So <clears throat> right now the image is very, very two dimensional. But what we can do is we can kind of use a, a technique very similar to a chamfer or a bevel. And we can kind of give more depth to one of these plates. Like for instance, we can add a bevel like right here.
Okay, so n now that no longer looks like it's just a flat thing. And notice it's uh, now the transition is a little weird because here we have this thing looks like it has depth, but this thing over here it's still flat. So how like how exactly do you like transition between dimensions like that? So what you can do is you can kind of um, extend one of these forms like further down and it should well a give you more depth so it makes more sense in how they're interacting okay so that plate on the right is that deep There. Okay, and let's go ahead and add some depth to this plate right here. Okay, the way it transitions, it has to be parallel with that line right there. Let's really zoom in a little more. There. Okay, so that's parallel. Okay. Alright, so now we have our two plates meeting but they have some depth to them and we did that by using some lines to apply some you know, some some deep some depth to their shape we can actually lighten this line a little bit or we can give it a very mild a chamfer <laughs> something like that okay so that's technically what we're gonna do all right so what we're gonna do now is okay those are the essential techniques we're gonna have in our pocket and we're gonna go ahead and take this and apply it to the line art that chief supplied to us so okay where the heck is that okay so here is chief's original sketch um, so just really really fast what I'm gonna do is I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, lift um, the line art so you can like do stuff with it in Photoshop. So this is a photograph he took of a pencil sketch. And one thing about the technique we're going to try to apply is that it does require some space. So you're going to have to learn how to make your drawings a little larger. And what you'll see here is it looks like, like so, I, I imagine this is probably a standard sheet of paper. And Chief is drawing them across the horizontal. But, like, if you're going to apply more techniques that require space, you're going to probably have to stand your gym up in this orientation on the paper. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. This technique is going to require some space. Whoa, that is... I pressed the absolute wrong key on my keyboard. I have to use escape. Okay, anyway. Okay, just real fast. We're going to lift the line art from here. Uh, so the lighting wasn't very good on Chief's photo. So we're going to do a really sloppy job. Like, I do have a... I do have a uh, like a more cleaned up version we're going to use during the demonstration, but okay. So the first thing we're going to do is like there was a lot of shadow over here, so I went ahead and got rid of it. Okay, image adjustments levels. I think it was. Yeah. So this is a technique I learned from my my old friend Crash Legacy. I haven't actually talked to him in a really long time, but yeah, he was real cool. Okay, so in the levels, what we're going to do is, there's a lot of gray here, and we're going to try our best to get rid of that. Okay, we're going to take these slider things and just kind of move them around a little bit. So we're going to try to get rid of as much as we can of the things that aren't the lines that we want to keep. Okay, I maybe want to darken the lines a little bit too. Okay.
Okay, from here, we're gonna add two layers. Okay, one, two. And this one, like, uh, let's fill it in with some kind of color. Let's do a purple. Okay, and we're gonna make it invisible. Like, we're gonna turn it back on later. Okay, so we're gonna select the background layer. We're gonna go over to channels. I'm not terribly sure what a channel is, but... <laughs> Okay, but uh, apparently it it looks like it kind of separates all the different wavelengths of visible light like on here. Anyway, we're gonna hit this button, which is load selection. Okay, so that should basically grab everything of all the channels that you have selected. Okay, and we're gonna go back to layers. We're gonna turn this layer back on, and we're gonna go to the new empty layer. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to look at selection. We're going to inverse the selection. Because right now it has selected all of the white space. And we want it to select um, the lines instead. Okay, so now that we're inverse, it's selected the lines. We're going to pick a line color. We use black. Okay, and we hit fill. And there we go. And we can deselect. Okay, so... Like normally I would do a better job of cleaning up the line art, like uh, to get rid of all this gray stuff, but I'm just doing a quick demo for you guys. Okay, so now we have the line art lifted into its own layer, meaning that if we have a layer underneath it, we can basically just do all kinds of like nutty coloring without interfering with the line art. Yeah, so I could go in and color like this vent on the knee or some crap like that. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's the technique I used to lift lines. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and start working on the section. So like as we're going through this, I'm just gonna narrate my thoughts just to see like the areas, like the various areas we can improve and all that type of stuff. Okay, so here's the one that I super duper cleaned up. Um, lots of precise selecting with the pen tool. It was pretty horrible. <laughs> but that process is really boring, so I'm not going to show you guys that. Okay, let's fix my pen. Okay, so I have Chief's line art on a layer on its own, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this into the thing I'm going to modify. Call this original, and we're gonna make that invisible because otherwise, you know, they kind of the layers kind of make each other darker. Okay, so we're gonna go in and just kind of eyeball all the lines he has on this, and we're gonna see if we can use our earlier technique, this one, to kind of soften some of the transitions and kind of make all the forms kind of stick together more. Okay. So let's start at the head, and here I'm seeing a lot of these lines are, what are these called? Like, um, it's this is a little different from geometry, but like when we have lines that are just kind of, the lines are unrelated, but they're touching with each other, it's kind of, it's something called a tangent. And so we kind of want to avoid tangents because it kind of, it bring it draws more attention to a space than it's supposed to have. So we're, we're going to actually so these lines right here, these two, they're tangent, and we kind of don't really want that. So I'm going to yeah, I'm going to make them not tangent anymore. Okay, and we're going to soften that line a little bit. Okay, and does this line right here have to be so hard? Okay, let's soften that a little bit too. Yeah, so I think um, this is like a really, really blown up sketch <laughs> of, of pencil. So my pen size is like very small compared to that. So maybe I should increase my brush size or something. 
Okay. And this, uh, these lines right here are very, very heavy. Let's try to lighten that a little bit. All right, and hmm, I haven't spent a lot of time eyeballing the line art for the Jim Sniper 2, so I don't know if it actually does this, but uh, hmm. Oh, wait, I guess we can do that too. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, there's probably not enough space to modify that right here, but right here, like, uh, you can kind of see, it all looks very, very flat, so if there's anything you can do to kind of add more depth to it, you can. And I don't know if its ears actually do this, but uh, you can you can add depth to round edges, too. Yeah, so I guess now its ears kind of stick out a little further, <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. Okay. Okay, let's move on down to the torso. And uh, the torso is... I don't know if it's like this in the original line art. It looks kind of squished vertically. And you'll see here that there are a ton of lines that are tangent with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and try to stagger some of those. Okay, these two lines right here in particular and like some of these hard lines like they like they kind of have to stay that way because that's just how the look the original design was so we're going to avoid modifying um these lines on the front of the the breasticles okay so i'm going to bring that a little bit down and i'm going to Soften that transition a bit. Okay, I'm gonna bring that line down. Okay, so that makes this much shape up here a bit deeper. I guess I shouldn't feel too bad about making this too sketchy. <laughs> yeah, I think eventually we're going to have to go over all these lines. Okay, and... Okay. And these things up here, I'm not too keen on what's happening exactly, because the, it's a little, the space is a little too small to see the detail. Uh, but I'm going to do my best to try to fix it, so... Yeah, and sometimes, like, some lines can just be, like, unnecessary. So you can remove them. Okay. Okay, where else is a bit of a trouble space? Okay, this line right here on the abdominal, that is a very, very hard transition. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to chamfer that and soften it up. Okay, eraser. Come on, eraser. Okay, and, and this is quite a hard transition right here. It kind of it kind of makes this form look really flat. So I'm gonna see if I can 
just add a little bit of depth right there with an additional line. Okay, very good. Okay, yeah. Let's try to complete this line so it looks a little less weird. Okay, yeah, I'll have to go back in and retrace all the other lines to make them all black. Okay, we can soften this transition a bit. soften this one a lot too. It's, it's quite a harsh heavy line right there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I am fairly happy with the torso. There is this one line on the backpack. Um, this is a very, very sharp edge. Okay. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do on the torso. Let's move on to the left arm. Hey, let me check my recording real fast. Yeah, I have this recording um, in uh, OBS and I'm also recording the, the audio independently. So if there's any audio stuff I have to fix, hopefully that, that won't be too hard. And here's kind of a, a weird thing that's happening in Chief's line art. Like, um, so this this plate on the shoulder pauldron it looks like like it's rounded, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be that way. Anyway, yeah. So we're not gonna fiddle with that because that's not really the point of the lesson. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna soften the transition between uh, this face and this face right here. Okay. All right, now it looks like one solid piece of armor. Okay. And right here it's it's quite busy, but I kind of think what happened is um the chief just ran out of space. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to do details in areas like that. Okay, so let's, let's see if we can soften some of this. Hmm. I guess we can kind of just redraw it. Or I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I can to make it look like it has some depth to it. Okay, um, yeah, let's soften this one a bit. Okay. 
Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I think this one. You can kind of add another plane there. Okay, and you can see right here, um, this is actually a chamfer that Chief added. Um, he doesn't seem to use them very often, but yeah, it, uh, it transitions between these two faces and it works fine. It looks a little too heavy, like in my opinion. Oh my god. Yeah, sorry if you guys are picking up on a lot of traffic on the audio. There's not a lot of space to add detail here, but yeah, let's try let's try that. That should get a give a little more depth to the hand armor. Okay. Um, okay, these guys. definitely soften this transition a bit. Oh, where's my pen? Actually, I don't think this is parallel anymore. Okay. Alright, let's keep going. Let's move on down to the skirt. I see a lot of opportunities here to soften the edges. Hmm. Okay, let's start with the center. Yeah, this line, actually, these two lines actually aren't parallel, so we're going to fix that. Soften this line. Yeah, so something about the center piece is kind of bothering me. I'm not really sure what, but I think it's just because it just looks like a box. I could have sworn it was supposed to have more detail than that, but I don't really remember. Kind of modifying the original drawing here. 
not really supposed to do that, but okay. <laughs> So we should be able to erase this. No, we don't really need that line anymore. There we go. Um, okay, this one. Yeah, I'm not sure if this corner is supposed to be rounded or, or not, but yeah, we're going to do one of these. There we go. This side skirt thing is a very good opportunity. It's basically just a box. And hmm. yeah, my right handedness is giving me some issues making this a straight line. line right here. This line is a tangent. Like these two lines, maybe they shouldn't meet. So we're gonna bring bring that one down a little bit. Should add a line right here. Okay, we can definitely soften the transition on the thighs right here. I don't, I don't know why my stylus always does that. <laughs> like I'll switch the mode, but it doesn't really switch right away until I actually make some pen strokes. It's fucking stupid. Here's another tangent we're getting rid of. Yeah, so it was tangent with this line on the leg armor, or the, the thigh armor, skirt armor.
Okay. Yeah, and I see he's he snuck in like a, a Xeon heat tube transfer <laughs> heat transfer pipe. Okay. All right. Yeah, and <clears throat> yeah, the original sketch was starting to get a little sketchy or shaky when it uh, came to the lower legs. Uh, oof. This might be a little rough. Okay, and that'll make it a little more together. Okay, so I guess these are just kind of like blocks that are sticking out. Yeah, that kind of does a good enough job of implying that it's a block. Yeah, those lines, you don't have to actually draw them in. They're they're kind of good enough just being implied. Yeah, I, I don't see any problem just leaving those off, so. Yeah, we can do some like really tiny marks like that. In case it's bothering you, but. <laughs> oh, you can't even see that when you zoom out. Okay, um, Okay, so this line right here is very, very harsh. I actually could leave that line off, but I think I'm going to go ahead and chamfer it. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I have no earthly idea what's going on right here because it's, it's not even symmetrical between the left and the right legs, feet. I think we actually get rid of some of these lines. Okay, and I guess the side of the foot <laughs> was not drawn in before. Okay, uh, hmm. I wonder if they soften these like a lot.
Okay. And I don't know if this is how it actually is on the original line art, but this this line right here doesn't have to be a tangent. Let's give a little more depth to the armor on the sole of the feet. So we're going to have it actually come out a little bit. Okay. Okay, we can kind of soften this corner a bit. Okay, this line is very heavy. Sometimes, yeah, just the perspective on this foot. Like, uh, sometimes you can just avoid that by choosing to have the mole suit stand in a different pose or something. Yeah, there's a lot going on here that we could fix, but yeah, that's, that's a different lesson for another time. Okay, and these little like cups right here. Yeah, there's a few different things we could do with this. Like I could give it a, I could make it softer like that. Yeah, we can even do like a double edge like that. Uh, I don't like that as much. So. Okay, wow. Okay, that might be all the things that I wanted to fix. Right, maybe we can fix this one line right here too. I technically don't even have to fill that in. Okay, I think that might be all the things. So all we really did on here is we just, uh, we removed some tangents, uh, we softened some transitions so that, you know, the form looks a little more cohesive. We lightened some of the lines. And hmm, what else can we do here? Hold on. I'm just gonna test something real fast. Hold on. This might be a stupid idea, but hmm. yeah, I, I can't, I can't darken Chief's line work anymore without just drawing over it. So I think I'm gonna do that uh, off camera, and so you guys can see that again in a second. But I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, stop the lesson here and we'll we'll come back in with the finalized product later on so you guys can see it but anyway i think that does an okay job of demonstrating the point if you guys have any questions or comments just go ahead and let me know <clears throat> alrighty and we're back uh, it took about an hour or two <laughs> i finished uh, redoing all the line work 
And you know, the goal here wasn't to make it super clean or straight, but just to make sure it looks cohesive. Like um, this is the same tool that did all the lines, you know what I mean? Okay, so yeah, so let's go ahead and compare the results to the, uh, the original sketch. Okay, and okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm actually going to I'm gonna put these things side by side. Anyway. Okay, here we got it side by side. And what I want you to note is not necessarily the the weight of the lines or how clean they are. Um, what I want you to look at is the depth of the forms and how cohesive the armor is like uh, does this piece look like it has depth does it look like it's it look it flows together so let's look at some little changes that i added okay so here i added a little bit of depth to some stuff on the face uh took care of this tangent up here in the corner See what else do we do? Yeah, I softened, I chamfered this edge right here. Okay, and I just kind of changed the geometry of uh, the skirt piece right here. Oh yeah, and there were some anatomy issues on the right shoulder, so I just kind of drew that in. And the foot here was a little goofy, but you know, I don't know. We're, we're not really worried about that. It's not really the point of the lesson, but yeah. And the legs down here, it feels like they could have some complexity added to them, but you can't really do that by chamfering lines or anything like that. You'd have to start doing stuff like panel lining and part separation and that type of crap. But okay, so. I think that demonstrates what we we're trying to do so I'm gonna go ahead and save this off and shoot the file over to Chief so he can have an idea of what we did but anyway guys I hope uh, that all makes sense and you enjoyed the lesson uh, hopefully this will help you improve on some of your stuff and yeah if you have any questions suggestions or comments just let me know um, if anyone else is interested in like uh, having me just go over some of their work and seeing if there's other ways to improve it. Uh, it doesn't have to be this specific aspect. We can go through plenty of other things. But um, yeah, I guess that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.